furious driving and this sounds so good I forgot to talk and if you like unusual weird interesting reviews of different cars then please do hit like and subscribe and the bell notification to find out what's happening next time now on with the review here's a question what do you do if you have a slightly well down at heel series 3 e-type want to go faster and happen to own a resto mod company well the obvious answer is your manual swap it and you add your own custom made fuel injection which is exactly what the owner of this car did E-Type started life in America, hence the fact it's left-hand drive. It was also an automatic with carburetors as they would have been in 1971. However, when it was found, it was in, well, let's just say, something of a sorry state. And uh, it actually needed all new floors putting into it, so it's not just the paintwork that's a bit rough on top, it was a bit rough underneath as well, but that is a great starting point for a resto mod car, and frankly, I do rather like the honesty of an unrestored, unrepainted classic. It gives it some real, well, not just patina, but history, character, depth. It shows its years. Well, this is ideal for a high-performance, long-nosed sports car. It does sound good through here. And it also has the American side marker lights, which make it stand out a little bit from the general UK cars. So although this car does still have its original 5.3 litre V12 under the bonnet, it's been heavily worked over, gone are the old uh, carburettors. Instead, it's got a custom-made EFI setup running from a trigger wheel on the crank on the front of the engine. It uses XJS inlet manifolds, but just purely the manifold casting and nothing more. Oh, and the uh, potentiometer with the uh, throttle linkages. But it's got custom-made high-flowing fuel injectors in all 12 cylinders. So it's actually got the capacity to flow for a 7 litre V12. So at some point they may actually extend this uh, research program into something else. Managing all is a custom ECU sitting down here underneath the passenger seat which runs the entire shebang, taking data from the potentiometer and that timing wheel in the front. The fuel pump has now moved to a submerged in-tank unit. Obviously, we can't see a picture of that. And there's a fuel regulator keeping the pressure as it should be under the bonnet with the engine. And 
this does get warm obviously, it's a lot of engine in a tight space, so there's a much bigger radiator crammed in the nose. Fortunately being a Series 3, it does mean it's got the bigger radiator grill to squeeze a bit more air in there. But twin electric fans operated obviously do their best. And most of the time it's fine, we are currently sitting uh, right in the middle where we should be. But in London traffic, apparently it does get a bit dicey, sucking a bit too much power out of the up it's got an operated alternator as well. It's still very much an ongoing project, keeping it, or well, getting it to be where it needs to be. Now originally, when the car went back on the road, it did so with its original automatic gearbox, which is something of a letdown for a car of this nature, so it's now got a five-speed manual, which is way more entertaining. It's mated, it runs through a heavy-duty clutch, so it's got some chance of keeping it all in check. Oh, this car is amazing! This is all done by a company called Lion and Fox and the owner of the company uses this as one of his daily cars. He doesn't care how it looks, he prefers it looking original, if anything. And to that end, he's just had the work done to make the car solid, make it safe, make it drive fantastically. And uh, that's as far as he's got. He's too busy using it to take it off the road and do boring stuff like painting it or fit carpets. We've just got sound deadening here. Not that you want to deaden the sound too much, because, wow, it sounds good. I have to say, I do kind of agree with him to a certain extent that leaving a car looking original is, is kind of preferable. Because you don't have to worry about taking it to a car park and someone scraping it because it's already, oh, half the paint's falling off already. You don't have to be precious about it, you can just enjoy the thing for what it is. Because a lot of these were not cheap cars by any means when they were new. At the same time, they were not massively expensive either. They were not beyond the realms of someone who really wanted one saving up and buying one back when they were a brand new car. They were designed to be driven, and they should be. And this kind of resto mod work just makes it so much more practical, more economical, more reliable, as well as more powerful and a lot more fun. Now, I like an E-Type as much as the next guy. They're a fantastic classic, but they are almost a default classic as well, so it's not one of the ones that makes me kind of go doughy-eyed and weak at the knees, because you, you kind of almost expect to see one at every car show. They're great cars, but they're a little bit, a bit obvious, if you know what I mean. However, this takes everything to a whole new level. It drives so, so well. I forgot to mention the suspension. I knew something else was, was worth mentioning. It's an upgraded discs and pads all round. It's got gas shocks all round. And in the front, it's got what looks like coilovers, but are actually helper springs surrounding the dampers. So yeah, they've done a lot to uh, stiffen up the ride. Now you might be thinking, oh my gosh, it's left-hand drive, as well as that massive bonnet that goes on forever. That must be a handful to drive, but really it's not. I know from the outside it looks like a massively long front end on this car, extending away into the middle distance, but really, once you're in the driving seat of an E-Type, it just, it just shrinks around you. Oh, yeah. Now, the manual gearbox is surprisingly light. The, gear, the gate is a little bit notchy, but it just flicks through with a nice, easy movement. The clutch pedal is quite heavy, but it engages very positively, making the whole action of changing gear a rewarding one. And of course, you forget how narrow these cars actually are. You see them in isolation, they look quite big, but compared to a modern car, they are actually not that large. The 
brakes are incredibly powerful. They stop this thing into a corner with ease and then you have so much power to slingshot out. We don't have actual power figures as yet because they're still refining everything. It's very much a work in progress. But needless to say, it's a lot more than it was when it was new. like a, a ratty, unloved old E-type that has been dragged out of a field. But under the skin, it is, if not the best, one of the absolute best examples on the road with so much more power and control than anything Browns Lane could manage back in the 1960s or 70s. just a magical device. This is an E-Type times 10. It's, oh, it's so good. Oh, you go through the windscreen, just little lap belts holding you in place when you really hit the brakes. The steering is just sublime incredible turning circle so despite the long length of the nose you can get yourself around tight corners and out of tight situations quite happily but the weighting of the steering is just so good and you can really feel exactly what the wheels are doing underneath the car I'm told it actually shoots fire out of the exhaust on the overrun and on fast changes. Unfortunately, the flat paint means I can't stick a GoPro back there particularly easily, so we'll never be able to get a shot of it, and it's well, not on this review anyway. Give this car back. I thought the owner was driving it with the window down just because it's so warm in the car. I think really, if they can hear it. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this ride out in this absolutely epic. E-Type, it's such an upgrade on the standard cars. I can understand why the owner drives it literally everywhere, through London, up to Scotland, across the continent. He loves this car and takes it everywhere he can. If it was mine, I would as well. If you've enjoyed this, please, as always, hit like and subscribe. And join me again next time driving something completely different. And if you want to help uh, support the channel and uh, help keep these kind of reviews and things going, please do consider hitting the uh, subscribe or Patreon buttons because that does help keep these reviews rolling. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.